Hey, welcome back to a series we started a couple of weeks ago called Influence. Simply the power to affect others. That's what we've talked about, the power to affect others. We're, we're all people of influence. And it doesn't mean that we all have crowds that we speak in front of or groups of people that we're in charge of. It just simply means that every one of us has the potential to uh, impact, to influence other, other people. And so uh, we're going we're gonna to jump right into a story in just a minute in Genesis 37. And so if you've got a Bible, uh, if you've got some kind of digital device, you can open up to a Bible. Genesis 37, I mean, we're literally going to fly through the story of a guy named Joseph uh, in just a little bit. See, the problem with influence is that when we look at it, our world has kind of a terrible view of what influence is, right? I mean, our, our world thinks that influence is like, you know, people that help us to make buying decisions, how to make purchases, you know, who to vote for, you know, uh, influence, it, it's kind of a pseudo influence. And so the world has this crazy uh, view and we have this, um, you know, mistaken idea of what influence is. And uh, then for us believers, uh, we all tend to be more influenced by the world sometimes than we do as far as influencing others. And so we want to we reverse that trend a little bit. Let's talk about influence and, and how we, we do that, how we influence others. And so we talked about in week number one, we're all influencers. Week number two, we talked about here's the bottom line thing of influence, and that is a trusting, caring, loving relationship like the Bible shows us, gives us the image of a shepherd, loving, caring, knowing his sheep. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, influencing by serving. Just to get us started, though, let me tell you that embarrassing story that uh, I told you I would tell you earlier. So my daughter Kimber and I are at uh, the lake, and we're going to do a little paddle boarding. This was about two months ago. And uh, so she's already out in the water, and she's doing her thing, and it's time for me to get on the paddle board. You know, I'm not the typical paddle board, you know, physique, uh, if you haven't noticed, but uh, I, I think I can do this. And so uh, I have the paddle board in the water. I'm sitting on the dock. I have my feet on the paddle board, and I think I'm just going to shove off and, uh, you know, I'll be good. Whatever happens, happens, right? And so uh, I'm pretty sure I can deal with this. And so that's exactly what I do. I grab here. And I have my feet on that, and I push off, and then the most amazing thing happened. As I'm pushing myself off, I am suddenly suspended in midair because my swimsuit catches a nail on the corner of the dock. <laughs> and I literally am in between the dock and the paddleboard and the water, and I can't do a thing. I, I'm stuck. I am in between. There, there is no going back. There's no going forward. I am held up by this little nail holding my swimming suit, stuck there completely until my swimsuit began to tear. And it ripped all the way down the backside. And I went face forward onto the paddleboard, into the water. That's my paddleboarding experience uh, for the summer so far. I was caught in between. There was, there was absolutely nothing that I could do. I, I was completely dependent upon. I mean, I just stuck right there in the middle. That, that, is, a, that is a powerless situation to find yourself in. And then, you know, to follow up a little bit of a humiliating situation as I climb up the ladder with no backside to my swimming suit. And uh, so, yeah, a little bit of a problem there. Well, many of us find ourselves, maybe not in that embarrassing situation, but in that seemingly powerless situation where we're in the middle. Where we would like to influence, but you don't have that position. You're, you're not the one in charge. I would like to influence, but I don't have that job. I don't have that position. I don't have that credibility. I don't have whatever it is. And so we think that, that we can't influence because we're stuck in the middle. We're stuck in this powerless situation. And I just want to remind you some words that Jesus said in Mark chapter 10, verse 43. He said, not so with you. He's contrasting what uh, we talked about last week when, when uh, some of uh, the people were saying, you know, we, we, uh, if you're going to be an influencer, you've got to be the one in charge. And, and so he said, the Gentiles, they lord it over. 
you know, they, they want to be the boss. They want to be the one that, you know, kind of bully everybody else. And, and this is what Jesus says to the disciples, not, not, not with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must first be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be a slave of all. And here, here's what I want you to think about. Jesus says that true influence doesn't come from the top down to the bottom. He didn't, say, he didn't say it comes from the top down, but it comes from the bottom up. If you really want to be a person of influence, you influence up. So we're going to talk today about Joseph. He's our example. We find him in the Old Testament, a man who spent his whole life in service, uh, who learned how to influence up, who learned how to let God tell his story, who learned to be a godly influence, even while he was kind of that, in that middle position. In fact, we'll see him emerge into a position where he does have, have some power, but most of his life, that was not the case. And we're going to talk about five key character qualities. We've got to fly through the story, and we're going to look at it from uh, relationships that he had where Joseph had to influence up. So if you're taking notes with me, here we're going to get to the five. Here's number one. Number one, it was with his family. We influence up when we serve with honesty in the face of adversity. We influence up when we serve with honesty in the face of adversity. Genesis 37, I hope you're there, verse 2. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brother. <laughs> There's that picture, that image for us right there. He's the young guy, he's the kid, he's out serving the flocks. Uh, and it says, uh, he, brought his, he brought their father a bad report. He's out with his brothers, he's tending the flocks, and he sees some things that, you know, don't speak well of the family, and he brought, uh, brought their father a bad report. You know, every family has a snitch, right? Every family has that person that, you know, tells on somebody else. Uh, most of the time we think of it as a bad thing, but it's not always a bad thing. In fact, in this case, we're reminded that honesty is the best policy. It's not always the pleasant thing to do, but it's always the best thing to do. We tend to think in this case of, you know, uh, Joseph telling on his brothers to get them into trouble, but uh, maybe it's because Joseph cares about the organization. He cares about the family. He, he wants to make sure that uh, uh, what is, is, is happening is out there. And so Joseph is honest in adversity. In fact, that honesty continues when Joseph begins to have dreams. If you skip over just a couple of pages, Genesis 37, verse 9 to 11, Joseph had another dream, told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream. This time the sun and moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream that you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, verse 11, but his father kept the matter in mind. So again, honesty, not always the pleasant thing, but it's the best thing. And, and he began, we began to see some influence. Joseph has some influence on his father because of his honesty. Now, he doesn't have any influence with his brothers yet. In fact, it's going to get him ousted out of the family, his honesty is. But his influence is growing within God's story. So if you know the story at all, you know that his brothers get mad. They have an opportunity. Uh, some of the brothers want to kill him. Another of the brothers says, no, let's not do that. They sell him into slavery. And so here's, here's point number two. It has to do with his relationship with this boss that he's going to have. His name is Potiphar. Joseph is a slave in Potiphar's household. And here's the point. We influence up when we serve with reliability in the face of responsibility when we serve with reliability chapter 39 still there in genesis verse 1 now joseph had been taken down to egypt potiphar an egyptian who was one of pharaoh's officials the captain of the guard brought him to the bought him from the ishmaelites who had taken him there the lord was with joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of his egyptian master and when his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord had given him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes, became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted to his care 
everything he owned. And so in Potiphar's house, Joseph was trusted. Joseph's trusted because of his honesty. Then we begin to see how he is empowered because of his reliability. He's developed this trustworthiness. Now we see him uh, uh, with reliability to the point that now Potiphar's trusting him with everything. Part of it is because God was with him. The Bible tells us that. But also because he was reliable and trustworthy. Remember, this is God's story. Joseph is just a part of it. It's not just Joseph's story. God brings the outcome, but Joseph is bringing his character to this. So no matter who you follow, you'll build influence with them if you act responsibly. Reliability in the the face of responsibility. Now, it becomes an issue because we get to point number three. We're going to talk about his relationship with Mrs. Potiphar, who becomes the opposition in the story. And here's the idea. We influence up when we serve with integrity in the face of a temptation. We're talking about serving up, somebody that's in the middle, somebody that feels powerless, yet Joseph still influences, and he influences up when he, when, when he serves with integrity in the face of temptation. Joseph is going to be seduced by Mrs. Potiphar, by Potiphar's wife. It, it's it's going to be an ugly deal. It's going to be a constant deal. It's going to be something she continuously is, is trying to do, and and Joseph keeps, he keeps, keeps facing that and keeps fighting that temptation. Genesis chapter 39, verse 9, he says, No one is greater in the house than I am. My master, Potiphar, has withheld nothing from me except you, Miss Potiphar. He says, Because you are his wife, how could I do such a wicked thing and, and sin against God? So he just, he's facing this temptation, he's fighting this temptation. In fact, at that point, uh, the story tells us that, that he runs out of the room. She has him cornered. He runs out of the room. He leaves his coat. And because he leaves his coat, then Miss, Mrs. Potiphar, then she accuses Joseph of attacking, attacking her. Joseph goes to jail. But in all of that, Joseph stays honest and reliable and a man of integrity. And what we see in his life is that his influence continues to grow. He's continuing to grow his influence. So we get to point number four, his relationship with another person, and that's his relationship with the guy who's in charge of the jail where he gets imprisoned, right? He gets thrown in jail from Potiphar because Potiphar believes his wife or Potiphar feels like he at least has to, you know, kind of hold up his, his, uh, his, his image there. And what we find in this relationship is we influence up when we serve with patience in the face of suffering. We, we influence up when we continue to serve with patience in the face of suffering. We're still in Genesis 39, verse 23. The warden, the jailer, paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. I mean, that, that, that's just the thing we continue to see in Joseph's life. This is just who he is. He, he just continues to, 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 to rise up and to, continues to be a person of influence. But he's about to be seriously challenged because there's a couple of other dreamers that are going to come across his path. Uh, we read about the dream of Pharaoh's baker and Pharaoh's cupbearer. If you recall, they're in jail with Joseph. They have dreams. Joseph is going to help them understand and tell their dreams. For the baker, it's not going to look promising. For the cupbearer, it's going to be okay. Chapter 40 of Genesis, verse 14, this is what Joseph tells the cupbearer. When all goes well with you, because his, his dream was uh, uh, an indicator of things that were going to turn out. When all goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness. Mention me to Pharaoh. Get me out of this prison. I was forcibly carried off from the land of the Hebrews, and even here I've done nothing to observe to deserve being put in a dungeon. Verse uh, 23, the chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He, he forgot him. You know, Joseph's going to stay in prison for another 
another couple of years. Because influencing up, influencing from the middle is, is a difficult thing. It's a hard place to be. It's a, a position that, that's easy to forget. There's, there's no immediate glory. There's no pats on the back. There's no words of praise or, or admiration. Being in the middle, stuck in the middle, sometimes is a difficult place. And that's exactly where Joseph is. So what, it, what does he do? Doesn't get resentful, doesn't get angry. He stays honest, he stays reliable, he kept his, his integrity. And now he's learning patience. You know, there's, this is the truth that all of the character traits that we're talking about, especially this one of, of patience, all of those are learned on the road less traveled. It's the right way versus, you know, the easy way. And that, he just continues, Joseph continues to choose the more difficult, the right way. The last relationship we're going to look at with Joseph is that with, with Pharaoh, with the king of Egypt. And, and here's the point we're going to use. We influence up when we serve with humility in the face of recognition. We influence up when we serve with humility, even in the face of recognition. So it's been a couple of years since Joseph has told the dreams and told the meaning of the dreams of the cupbearer and the baker. He's been forgotten until Pharaoh has a dream, a couple of dreams. Pharaoh begins to seek the answers to these dreams, wants to know what, what his dreams mean. And he begins to, to ask, and, and nobody can, can tell what his dream is. The cupbearer hears of that and says, oh, my goodness, I, I just remembered. I know somebody. I, I met him in prison. He told what my dream meant. And so Joseph is called for. Joseph is cleaned up. He's brought before Pharaoh. And chapter 41 of Genesis, verse 15, Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream, and no one can interpret it. But I've heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. Listen to Joseph's response here, verse 16. He says, I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. So he hears the, the dreams, and Joseph interprets them because God gives him the wisdom, the ability to do that. And uh, Joseph understands from God and tells Pharaoh, this is what your dreams mean. There's going to be seven years of absolute uh, abundance of, of, of produce. It's going to be followed by seven years of famine and, 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 and absolute you know, uh, uh, waste. And, and, and the survival of our nation and our people is going to uh, be uh, you know, dependent upon careful retention and storage of grain. But did you notice that, first of all, Joseph gives God the credit. He didn't, he didn't take the credit for being able to interpret the dreams. It's God's story. It's not his. Joseph understands that. And so he's still influencing up by giving God the credit here. In fact, what we find is that on no occasion does Joseph ever exalt himself to a position of leadership. Not, not ever does he do that. Not ever does he take the credit. Not ever does he, he, he want the, the, the notoriety. He always points to God. And he serves the people. He serves the people. Genesis 41, verse 46. Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from Pharaoh's presence and traveled throughout Egypt. During the seven years of abundance, the land produced plentifully. Joseph collected all the food produced in those seven years of abundance in Egypt, and he stored it in the cities. In each city, he put the food grown in the fields surrounding it, verse 57. And eventually, all the world, all the world came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph because the famine was severe everywhere. So we get this picture of Joseph now who is serving people and joseph is is like the top guy in the world i mean joseph is is second in command 
People are coming from all over the known world to buy grain from Joseph, who never sought that position, never wanted to be. He was always influencing from the middle. God has a story that he is telling with our lives too. May not be as grand a scale as Joseph found his life to be, but we all have the opportunity to influence and to influence up. Here, here's what I want, I, I want to just remind you, that when you serve like Joseph served, When you have that idea of wherever you are, you're going to influence up. That you're going to serve people. When you have that servant mentality, it just gives you credibility. If you're trying to to grab the, the notoriety, if you're trying to grab the power, if you're trying to grab the position... That, 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 that's not going to work. Servant leaders, they earn the right to influence. Servant leaders are the ones that, that gain the, the respect and attention of others. They, they have learned to influence up. And so be honest in the face of adversity. Be, be reliable in the face of responsibility. Put integrity in the face of temptation. Be be patient in the face of suffering and be humble in the face of recognition. So here's the challenge, I think, for us. Here's the question for all of us. Are you allowing God to refine you in the crucible of service to others? Are you letting God, like he did with Joseph, to to mold you and to shape you and to, to gain those character qualities as you live a life of service to others and are you following jesus the greatest servant of all you know this isn't something jesus just asks us to do this is something that jesus modeled for us philippians chapter 2 tells us that he humbled himself and he became obedient to death even death on the cross Jesus, he, he, could have, he could have stayed in heaven. He, he could have continued his position of authority and power. But the Bible tells us that he became a servant and he took on the role of the cross and he did it. And the Bible tells us in that same passage in Philippians 2 that as a part of that, that in one day that he will be known as Lord of all and every knee will bow and every tongue confess that he is the Lord. Jesus takes on the role of servant that we read in Scripture and dies for our sin, pays the price for us. But in his influencing up, he is ultimately going to be known as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and everyone will bow down before him someday. Have you decided that you're going to do that starting today? Listen, if you haven't, it's not too late today to say, I'm going to follow the greatest servant of all you need to make a decision this morning about following jesus if you're here i'm going to be right up in the front row if you're online uh, fill out our communication card we'll have somebody touch base with you let's pray father we're grateful to be here today and to be reminded of how much you love us to be reminded of how much you have served us to model that for us and so father we look forward to to you using us in your story And would you help us to be people who no matter what position you place us in, no matter how much or how little power that you give us, to be people of influence, to influence up, to influence from the middle, and to to love people and to serve people like you have. Father, help us to follow your son Jesus, to love others because of Jesus, and to live always for him. We pray it in his name. 